business has a vital role in addressing the climate crisis by driving down greenhouse gas emissions and building a resilient zero emissions economy. This action must be grounded in science. Hi, my name is Dr. Shruti Sharma and today I am going to simplify SBTI, Science Based Target Initiatives. So what exactly is the Science Based Target Initiative? The SBTI is a collaboration between the CDP, Carbon Disclosure Project, the United Nations Global Compact, World Resource Institute, WRI, and the World Wide Fund for Nature, WWF. SBTI helps companies set greenhouse gas reduction targets that are in line with the latest climate science to limit global warming below 2 degrees centigrade, above pre-industrial levels, aiming for a 1.5 degree centigrade. But why is this so important? As we know, our planet is facing unprecedented environmental challenges. To prevent the most catastrophic impacts of climate change, we need to act quickly and decisively. Science-based targets provide a clear pathway for companies to reduce their emissions in line with what science says is necessary. The corporate net zero standard provides a common, robust, science-based understanding of net zero. It gives business leaders clarity and confidence that their near and long-term decarbonization plans are aligned with climate science. Net zero pledges now cover 92% of GDP and 88% of emissions worldwide. Despite this, the definition of net zero and the path to get there has been interpreted in different and inconsistent ways. Without a common definition, targets can differ in terms of the emission sources included and the depth and speed of emission reductions. This has fueled confusion and accusation of greenwashing. The SBTI's corporate net zero standard addresses this problem by providing a clear, consistent, and size-based definition of net zero. By aligning with the standard, companies can set science-based net zero targets to demonstrate their climate action leadership and their commitment to ensuring a habitable planet for all. Now let's talk about how SBTI works. Now there are four key steps companies need to follow. The first step is to commit. Companies make a public commitment to set a science-based target. The second is to develop. Businesses need to develop a target in line with SBTI criteria. Rapid deep cuts to direct and indirect value chain emissions must be the overarching priority for companies. Companies must set near-term science-based targets to roughly half emission before 2030. This is the most effective, scientifically sound way of limiting global temperature rise to a 1.5 degree centigrade. Since SBTI criteria V5.0, companies must set 1.5 degree centigrade aligned scope 1 and scope 2 targets, which must be achieved within 5 to 10 years from the date the target is submitted to the SBTI for validation. Companies must not exclude more than 5% of total combined scope 1 and 2 emissions from the boundary of the GHG inventory or the target boundary. There has to be a cross-sector absolute reductions. All companies, apart from the flag and the power sector, who must follow sectoral guidance, must reduce emission at a minimum of 4.2% annually. There has to be sector-specific pathways, which can be absolute reduction or intensity convergence, depending on the sector. For scope 2, we need to source renewable electricity at a rate that is consistent with the 1.5 degree centigrade scenario. 80% of renewable electricity procurement by 2025 and 100% by 2030 as a threshold. If scope 3 is 40% or more of overall emissions, companies must set one or more emission reduction targets or supplier in customer engagement targets that collectively cover at least 67% of total scope 3 emission in conformance 
with the GHG Protocol Corporate Value Chain, which is Scope 3 Accounting and Reporting Standard. Now, Scope 3 targets must be aligned with well below 2 degree centigrade pathways and targets achieved within 5 to 10 years from the date the target is submitted to the SBTI for validation. According to SBTI, companies must also set long-term science-based targets that align to 1.5 degree centigrade for a target year no later than 2050 as part of their net zero commitment. These targets cover at least 95% of scope 1 and scope 2 emissions and at least 90% of scope 3 emissions. Companies must also neutralize their residual emissions. Now, after a company has achieved its long-term target and cut emissions by more than 90%, it must use permanent carbon removal and storage to counterbalance the final 10% or more of residual emissions that cannot be eliminated. A company is only considered to have reached net zero when it has achieved its long-term science-based target and neutralized any residual emissions. Companies must also look beyond value chain mitigation. Now, businesses should invest now in actions to reduce and remove emissions outside of the value chains in addition to the near and long-term science-based targets. SBTI has developed separate sector-specific methodology, frameworks and requirements for different industries. As of April 2024, sector guidance is available for 14 sectors. Now, after the businesses have set near-term and long-term target, they must submit the target for validation. After the targets are submitted and once approved, the target should be publicly announced. Setting science-based target isn't just good for the planet, it's good for the business too. Now, here's why. The first thing is, it reduces risk associated with future regulations and market changes. It drives innovation and efficiency within the company. It enhances brand reputation and it meets stakeholder expectations. And also, it builds long-term resilience by addressing climate-related risk. In April 2024, the SBTI got into controversy after the Board of Trustees released a statement setting out an intention to permit the use of ESEs, which are Environmental Attribute Certificates for abatement purposes against Scope 3 emission reduction targets. Now, SPTI did not previously permit the use of ESEs due to the difficulties faced in tracing, measuring and validating their impact. SSO, which is Standard Setting Organization that do not follow a consensus model or the WTO principles for international standard development, are vulnerable to lobbying from corporations, especially when they are reliant on their funding. Now, one of the SBTI funders, which is the Bezos Earth Fund, exerted influence on SBTI board members to relax the position on carbon offset. Now, the statement led to a response letter signed by various teams within the SBTI and media speculation about the policy change. The counter argument being that the carbon offsets are incompatible with the Paris Agreement. Now, launched in September 2022, the SBTI's Forest, Land and Agriculture, which is FLAG, FLAG guidance, allows companies to claim the achievement of their emission reduction targets through insetting, breaking from the long term held SBTI position that emission reduction targets should only be achieved through emission reductions. Now, this insetting is a business-driven concept and not a term defined in international standards and guidelines such as ISO 14050, Environmental Vocabulary and IO, IWA 42, Net Zero Guidelines. Now, if you're ready to get started with SBTI, here's how you can begin. The first thing you should do is to visit the SBTI website and explore their resources. You should engage with experts and stakeholders within your company. You should make a public commitment to setting science-based targets. And last, follow the SBTI guidelines to develop and submit your target. 
science-based targets are a powerful tool in the fight against climate change. By aligning your company's goals with climate science, you are not just contributing to a sustainable future, you are also driving innovation and building resilience. Now, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more insights on sustainability and climate action. Thank you.